Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today we're going to be talking about V-Ray and displacement because for an upcoming tutorial, um, I am going to be using displacement. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the tutorial because uh, I kind of wanted it to be a surprise, but um, basically we're going to be using um, displacement and it's not like your standard displacement with Cinema 4D. Um, so I'm going to go try and, and go through it and show you guys um, pretty much the, the process that I've figured out thus far. There may be a better way of doing it, um, however I haven't found it um, because I'm still trying to learn it. Um, and that's one of the big goals for this year of 2014 is to learn about V-Ray more than what I have done in the past. Um, so I'll probably talk about that in another video but let's get started. Um, so at the minute here, I do have a very simple scene set up. Um, it is using V-Ray, of course. Um, so I've just set up the render settings. Uh, we've set up um, the actual scene. So we've got this oil tank here, which is going to be the main focus. We have the floor, and then we have one light. Um, it's rendering pretty slow, in my opinion. So what I may end up doing is going into the um, GI and putting this to very, very fast, and going into the... V-Ray system and up in these two 32 and 32 don't worry about these um, you don't need to understand what they do um, however if you are interested um, increasing the size in the V-Ray system basically just increases the size of these little um, samplers uh, which in in turn should make it actually render a lot faster um, but don't worry too much about that so as you can see, it, it, the one thing with V-Ray is it gives you really nice results. However, the render times are the fastest. Of course, that really does solely depend on your system, whether you have a render farm set up, anything like that. But generally speaking, um, it, it's not the fastest renderer out there, uh, not by a long shot. Um, but the results are fantastic. So this is what we've got. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to add some displacement to this. So I've already UV'd this object and I'm going to go into Photoshop and this is where the um, the final output is. So what I'm going to do, we're going to make a displacement which basically means no colours except black, white and grey. So anything in between black and white goes. Um, and this all depends on how far you want the, um, the displacement to go in either direction. The way I remember it is black is always in and white is always out. Now, thinking about that, it does sound slightly racist, um, but it, it's not meant in that way. So if anyone kind of leaves a comment about that, it's not intended in that way. It just means black it basically goes to the left and white goes to the right. Again, it sounds very racist, but it's not intended in that way. I guess it really depends how you think about it. But anyways, let's continue with the tutorial. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to make it black because that's going to be the, the base color. So we want all that to go in. So whatever we want to stand out, um, and it depends if you want to do it the opposite way. Um, if you are wanting your displacement to go in, so let's say like a crack in, in a rock, then of course your foreground would be um, would be white and then the black would obviously be the crack and that would actually go in. Um, so with this I'm going to change it to I forget which one it is but just scrolling through these I think it's going to be hard light yeah there we go so I set this to hard light this top layer which means the white will still appear but the uh, grey will actually go away um, and this way we can actually um, of course draw on here and we can see where we're actually drawing so I'm going to make a new layer um, and then I'm just going to add something um, in here so we're going to add a triangle on both of these we're going to go in and we're just choosing anything to be honest and we're going to add a leaf to the side here and this isn't anything specific so don't get it in your, in your head that I'm doing this for a specific reason this is just an example um, and then we'll go in and we'll maybe do one more like a star up here so these are all our objects and this is what we're doing and the best way um, and the reason should I say why we're using um, a UV map is because 
it's very difficult to place a displacement map in CG because you can't see it unless you render it. Um, so this way you can actually place it where you want it and then this will interact how you want it when you actually render it out. It will be in the place where you want it instead of actually guessing. Um, so what I'm going to do is with all these I'm going to control E to merge them. And then what I like to do is go to filter, blur, and do a Gaussian blur. Hit OK and blur it by 1.5. This is just going to dull down the edges. And I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to save as a JPEG. I'm going to name this D1. And then I'm going to do Control Alt Z, and then File, Save As, and I'm name this D2. Now the reason we have two of these displacements is because sometimes it really depends on the blurriness or the sharpness of your UVs. Um, it determines how it turns out in, in Cinema 4D for example. Um, so that's why I like to make two. I found though through the um, testing that I've done that a, a blurriness of 1.5 um, at a 12, no it's not 12k, it's um, 1024, so it's a 1k map size and works really well but again it all depends on, on the size um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to create shader vira bridge and we're going to use a displaced material i'm going to drag and drop this onto the oil tank and i'm going to go to file save now vray can be a little bit buggy sometimes so it's always a good idea to constantly save your work so i'm going to open this up and the interface here is pretty simple um, we have two options, um, 2D and 3D mapping. I like to leave it on 3D mapping. Um, the amount, which is basically the amount it extrudes. Um, and the difference between bump and displacement are quite critical in understanding them. Bump is a fake displacement. It, it basically mimics um, a, a displacement. However, it doesn't affect the geometry in any way. Um, displacement actually morphs and changes your geometry. So if you have a really low res uh, mesh then your displacement isn't going to work very well because it doesn't have enough geometry to actually change displacement and that's why our object here is quite high, highly dense and it is important that you do have equal quads which are basically squares so it is important that you keep them as square as possible. Um, so I'm going to go to texture, I'm going to open up I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to pick the D1 which has the blur on and then you, you do have the ability to blur it inside Cinema 4D however I don't see that we have the ability to check how blurry it is um, and 1% here drastically increases it in the viewport so that's why I prefer to do it in Photoshop seeing as I'm there anyways. So if we do a quick render of this with the interactive render region just let it um, pump out here. You can see um, straight away that we have a displacement. Um, the edges are extremely jagged and the displacement is quite big. Now one thing to note with V-Ray, um, if you are trying to get accurate results, the size of your mesh is extremely important. Um, for example, the oil tank that you're viewing here is only um, 10 inches tall, so it's about 25 centimeters um, tall, so that's not big at all really. Um, so an amount of one centimeter is quite big. Um, if your object is, let's say, um, or, or 200 inches um, high, then it's going to be 10 times as big as this. So instead of having an amount of one centimeter, you would probably need something like maybe 50 centimeters to get the same depth so keep that in mind when you're working with this so I'm going to put this down to point um, let's say point 0.4 and I love working with the interactive render region because I can get a quite a quick update of, of what's going on and that is quite important so you see that now that we've actually lowered that amount the edges are as jagged which is kind of cool so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, highlight this area a little bit better so we can see the full vastness of what we are trying to accomplish here um, and you can see we have the little triangle on top as well and it looks pretty fantastic um, if we up in quality 
take a little bit longer to render out but we'll get a better representation of them edges um, so let's say we're happy with the amount so the distance of 0.4 we're happy with that um, what we need to take into consideration now is this jagged edge at the top in fact let's just focus on that because if we focus on the worst area the rest should follow so by looking at this it looks pretty jagged and I've played around with all these tools um, all, and I'll just say all these settings and nothing really worked except for this the parameters here now you might think it's actually quite um, you know common sense to, to check these parameters however and there's a few things that you do need to keep in mind when using these and um, keep continuity and tight bounds these are two that I have checked in the past and they do seem to help out it basically stops the mesh from um, kind of overlapping in certain areas and bulging out um, if you play with these settings you'll, you'll understand what I mean and it also depends on your mesh as well now this doesn't really help the the jaggedness because the jaggedness is down to the map solely and um, so depending on how, how blurry it is or how sharp it is that will affect it as well so what I like to do is go into the sampling I like to change it to alias free and you'll see straight away that we get a lot softer results and the reason we get softer results is because this is kind of a blur that's being added to it um, so again depending on your map you can change these settings um, you'll find one that will work for you but these are the ones that you need to experiment with I can't give you magic numbers they do not exist um, because each project will be different and each setting for that project will have to be different there never is a magic number for everything so you can see that the jaggedness is actually um, quite better now it's not as jagged um, but we still can do more and one of the things that I like to do is uncheck use global parameters and I like to use view dependent which can change the the overall results now you see in here we've got this really horrible jacked look and that's because we're using the most important feature here which is edge length and it's set to 4 so if we go to view independent and um, this helps depending on of course what map you're using but it generally helps like here you can see it sorted that big kink out that we had so that's one thing that's helped us improve and the most important thing um, and the one thing that will probably crash your system the most is edge length now the edge length is in layman terms it's how many subdivisions will be added to each polygon so this is kind of your subdivision um, and if you go too low it will take forever to calculate and it will probably crash um, Cinema 4D as well max subdivisions is how many subdivisions will be added to the edge length so it's kind of saying it's going to subdivide um, one of these squares by this then by this um, that's the kind of the way I understand it however to make things easier for you to understand the only thing you really need to change um, is the edge length so the lower you go the more subdivisions are going to be added which means the longer it's going to take to render however it's going to give you the better results so let's just do um, one quick render to the picture viewer so we can um, see the results for ourselves um, in, in real time I suppose and also you know how long it actually renders as well because this should take maybe 20 30 seconds to render which isn't too bad um, you know maybe you could optimize the scene a little bit better you probably could to be honest and this was just thrown together quite quickly but that being said when you've got materials and stuff on you're still gonna get a long render anyway um, but you can always disable the displacement um, when doing test renders because you know if the displacement looks good or not from these type of tests so you can see it's about 40 43 seconds which isn't too bad so now if we go in here and change this to one and do another render you'll see it takes a little bit longer to calculate than it did before and hopefully you will see that the results look a lot better um, and the time shouldn't be that much more but I guess we'll see from this um, render it looks to be mm, I th I'm thinking it's gonna be on par 
but I guess we'll see when we come to them delicate areas like at the top because the sides were pretty decent to start with it's just this top one was really jagged so if the top one looks better then we know and that we're in the right direction and from the looks of it right now we seem to be in the right direction so you can see this took you know an extra what three seconds so that isn't bad at all to be honest so if we look in between these by going up and down and um, you can see on the star the edges they're a lot more crisper a lot more cleaner and um, the I guess the biggest noticeable one would be the triangle on top you can see the edges are really jagged um, and by going to the um, you know increasing the the edge lengths by one um, it's actually increased that tremendously now this all depends on how intricate your uh, displacement map is um, but in the short term it turned out really really well um, so remember to save because that is important but what we're going to do is we're going to go to point mm, let's do point four and do another render just to show you um, how long it can take to calculate especially if you go below one so you can see this stage alone is taking a tremendous amount of time compared to the other ones um, and one of the things that you will have to take into consideration with any um, aspect of Cinema 4D or CG in general is are the settings worth it um, by reducing it by 6 or should I say 0 0.6 um, is the extra render time good you know is it acceptable and are the results that we're seeing acceptable you know are they better and and if they are better and um, you hope they will be better but by how much is it noticeable would you even notice it and they're the type of things you need to ask yourself because if they are then you might as well leave it um, to a higher setting which in turn in, in this case would just render just as fast um, but give you pretty much similar results so you can see from here by flicking from one to the other you can't really see any difference to be honest I can't see any difference to be honest uh, let's see if we can do it fast no 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 real difference however this one is a significant difference so increasing it to 0.4 is just not viable so we might as well keep it at 1 now you can do a lot more testing so you probably could end up with something like 2.7 so that's the magic number that's what works for us I'm not saying it is but that could be an example and so from 4 to 2.7 and we get really good results we get um, of course a shorter render time at like let's say 30 um, no because that's 4 so let's just say 41 second um, in an animation all them seconds add up um, so keep that in mind and that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this episode so hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully you learned something from this tutorial if you've got any questions make sure you leave me a comment or a message or leave something on my Facebook which is Finimation, um, and I will catch you guys in the next tutorial. Um, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Peace.